Hey, how's it going? It's your boy Cast, and today I'm gonna be doing a quick tutorial on some effects that I've been wanting to show you guys how to do for a while now. So I'm gonna play them all back. Um, first, I'm gonna play them back all together and then separately and put some links in the bottom so that you guys can just kind of pick and choose which effects you want to learn how to do. So here it goes, and yeah. Got out to fight, she was gone. Guess she So the first effect I got is basically just a delay with a filter on it. The second effect is a simple tape stop effect. So basically that's the effect that you're hearing in the background here. And the third effect is this one right here. So for the first effect, all I did was record two separate audio tracks. The one is going to be my main track sitting right here. The second one is my background track sitting right here. The first track doesn't have anything too crazy on it. It's just a limiter, an equalizer, and some auto-tune. You can check out my other tutorial where I go more over the limiter and the equalizer function of FL Studio, which is probably one of the most important parts when it comes to mixing your vocals. The second background track, like I said, all I added was a fruity delay bank and the fruity filter. So let's get right into it. Um, the fruity delay bank. Once you get to the fruity delay bank, you just want to go to the presets and select default. Now the most important things that you're going to want to focus on is the time and the volume. The time basically dictates how far apart the feedback of the vocals is going to be. So if I turn the time up, the delay in between the feedback is going to be bigger and it's going to sound like this. And if I turn the time down all the way, it's going to sound more like this. The way I had it set up was I had the time set at about halfway to give me a nice spacing without going over the top too much. So once you got the time adjusted properly, you're going to want to focus on the volume. The volume basically dictates how loud the feedback is going to be. So if I turn it up all the way, it's going to sound like this. So it's going to be a lot louder. If I turn it down too much, you're not going to be able to hear it. So keeping it somewhere around here is probably going to be right. Also, if you look up here, you have the dry knob and the wet knob. The dry knob basically dictates how loud your vocal is going to be without any effect on it. And the wet is basically just the pure effects. So let's say I turn down the dry all the way and keep the wet up all the way. That means it's just going to be pure effect. And it's going to sound something like this. And the other way around, if I turn dry up all the way and wet down all the way, there's not going to be any effect on it. So you can change these towards your personal preferences, but I like to keep them at about the same level to give me a nice mix. The second thing I did with the vocal is put a fruity filter on it. The fruity filter just basically helps the vocal sit in the background a little bit better. So without the fruity filter, it's going to sound like this. And with the fruity filter turned on, it's going to sound like this. So to get started with the fruity filter, you're going to want to click presets and default. I like to turn my lows down all the way, the highs all the way up, the cutoff frequency to about this portion, and the resonance up all the way too. But you can also mess around with this yourself a little bit to get the sound that you want. And if you want a more intense effect, you can just turn on the two times right here. This is basically just going to act as if there's two filters sitting on top of my vocals. Also playing with the cutoff frequency is going to change the sound a lot. So you're definitely going to want to mess around with that. So the second thing I wanted to show you was a tape stop effect right here. Gonna tie a rope. I really like that one because it sounds nice and gritty. So basically to get that effect, you're going to want to open gross beat. Once you're in gross beat, you're going to want to figure out the part of the vocal that you're going to want to change. So I'm going to press play now. Gonna tie. So since I want the tape stop effect to take place in the part where I say tie, I'm going to right click right here, right click a little bit after the vocal, and right click down here again. Now I want to right click on this dot down here, select single curve, 
and then I can adjust the curve to my preferences. So if I keep the curve up here, it's gonna sound like this. Gonna tie. And if I don't want the effect to be that intense, I can slide this button up a little bit. Gonna tie. So once you're happy with what you did, you're gonna wanna create an automation clip. An automation clip is basically this thing right on here, and it basically dictates when gross beat is gonna kick in and when it's gonna be turned off. Because if you don't do this, gross beat is always gonna be on and the tape stop effect is gonna be on all of your vocals, and you don't want that. So the way to do that is right click on the green button right here, create automation clip, and once you click on create automation clip, you're gonna be faced with something that looks sort of like this. So since I want the tape stop effect only to be active at around this part of my audio, I'm gonna right click up here and right click up here. Now I can set two other dots to turn it off down here and down here and just adjust them properly. And once I did that, I can drag down these ends here, which basically means that the gross beat effect is gonna be off through this portion of the song turn on through this portion of the song and turn back off right down here. So once you're done, it should sound sort of like this. Okay, so the third effect that I wanted to show you guys is this one right here. I really like this one because it sounds super gritty. For this one, I recorded two separate audio tracks and both of them are basically gonna have the same effect. The first effect is pretty simple, it's called the Stereo Shaper, but I'm not gonna get into the Fruity Stereo Shaper right now because I did do another tutorial where I mentioned it before, so if you guys wanna hear about that, just click the link that's popping up right now. So once you're done with the Fruity Stereo Shaper, you can open Gross Beat again, only this time we're not gonna be in the time section of things, we're gonna be more in the volume section right down here. So as you can tell here, the volume's turned up all the way, right here it's turned down, back up, back down, back up, back down, back up, back down. Again, there's a couple of cool presets. There's the two beat gate, which means that every second beat is gonna turn down the volume for you. Here, it's every single beat. Here, it's every half beat. Here, it's the third beat. So if I were to choose a half beat, it'd sound like this. which is also pretty cool, but for that creepy sound, I'm gonna keep it at the quarter beat right here. So once you're actually happy with the effect that you got, you can change the intensity of the effect using this knob right here. You can turn the effect up to make it louder, or you can turn the effect down to get rid of the effect altogether. So if I turned it up all the way, it would sound more like this. But for this song, I think I'm gonna keep it at about halfway. Also, anytime you're using gross beat, you're gonna wanna use a reverb. In this case, I'm using Fruity Reverb 2. Basically, this is gonna help the sound sit in the mix a little bit better and it won't be quite as choppy. The main aspects that you wanna focus on in Fruity Reverb 2 is the size right here. If you turn it up, it's gonna sound like you're sitting in a cathedral. And if you turn it down, it's gonna sound more like you're in a bathroom or a small pipe. For the sake of saving my song, I'm gonna keep it at about halfway. Um, let's just call it kitchen style. Again, with the Fruity Reverb 2, you have the dry and the wet slider. So if you turn the dry slider down, you'd have pure effects. And if you turn the wet slider down, you basically wouldn't have any effects at all. It's usually a good idea to keep them both at about the same level though. So the only thing extra that I added after the reverb was the filter, just because I feel that it sounds whack and it helps the vocal sit a little bit more in the background again. Also, I'm using automation clips to turn up and down the volume. Watch. This is basically done by clicking on the volume slider, selecting create automation clip, and again, you're faced with something that looks sort of like this. So just right click it to create a new point, and there you have it. So leaving on that note, I want to hope that this video wasn't too long and I could give you guys some inspiration pointers and new tips. Be sure to like, comment, rate, and subscribe. And check out my other videos on compression and equalization because I think that's one of the most important things that you're going to want to learn when you're just starting off. And remember that this whole music thing, it's not about being the best. It's about having fun on your way to becoming the best. Have a good one. To fight, she was gone. Guess she had your tea. Gonna tie a rope around her neck and hold it till she can breathe.
So with the unique pattern